So we've all pretty much seen how curves work if you've ever done anything in a photo program. We've probably seen curves and how they work. Right here they are right in the middle of the screen. Uh, in a lot of beginner tutorials, they show how to add contrast to a shot by adding in a little bit of an S curve in here. And we can get an idea of how to make our shot look a little punchier. And then if you uh, follow a couple other tutorials, you'll probably see, okay, well you could break these up and just work with individual channels. So then we could be able to add something like this, which makes the shot look a little warmer. Something like a very early on Rihanna video kind of look. Um, but if you didn't know that there are a bunch of other curves that we can do, instead of just working with specific color channels, what we could do is we could pick a hue, which is like a color value or a saturation value or a luminance value, which is like the brightness of a shot. We can pick those different values and then affect something completely different out of those three. So I'll quickly, I quickly wanna go through and show you how we can creatively change the look of this shot or elements in this shot by using the color values that are already in the shot instead of just making them up. So the first little guy that I'm gonna jump over here is the hue versus hue. And the easiest way to remember how these tools work, all of these tools that we'll be going over, is the first item that is here before the, the verse is going to be the element in which we're going to be picking the value from. So hue is just color, so we're gonna be picking a color and then verse, we're going to then be changing a color, right? So depending on what color we pick, we're gonna be changing that to a different color. So I think the big thing that sticks out here is probably this red boat. So we can come over to here and make sure that we have our qualifier selected. And I'm just going to click in the boat and it's going to add on a couple of points here. The big thing to remember is that this little line right here accounts for a value of one. So if you ever accidentally move it, you just have to come in here, type one, and it'll go back. If you wanna remove a point, you can just right click and it'll remove the point. You can left click to add a point. When we pick the value up here, it, it added three points. So there's one here, there's one here, and one here. Obviously this is similar to a color wheel, uh, but it's obviously in a strip. So uh, where this ends over here, it starts over here. So if I was to move this, you can see it's adjusting over here. And if you're paying attention up in the viewer, we are changing the color of that boat. As simple as that. And we're not affecting anything else in the shot. We're affecting the boat. You do have to be mindful because we are also affecting the signs in the background. If I turn this node on and off, right? Uh, with a quick power window, we would be able to isolate just the boat if that was something that we wanted to just affect is just the boat here. Let's turn this off. We are now only affecting the boat and the signs aren't affected anymore as you can see there. So we do have that as an option. Like I said, all of the tools that we ever work with, the power windows always work with them, but let's remove that for now. Um, and so yeah, that's how curves work. Uh, we can always pop out the curves if we need to see them bigger, if we wanna do like really fine adjustments. We can move this to another window, if, or another screen if you have another uh, monitor. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how they work. So remember the first item here is the thing we're picking and then we're changing the verse, whatever it's versed. So let's go in and change something else. Um, let's go in and change the sky. So we'll pick the sky here and let's make the sky a little tealer. So that's kind of looking a little more teal if I turn that on and off, right? But there isn't a lot of saturation up there. So let's go in, we're going to pick the same color, which is the sky, but we're gonna change the saturation, which is the next one here, if we click in that. Hue versus saturation. So I'll do the same thing, pick the sky, and then we can increase that saturation there. So as you can see, we're changing the color and the saturation. You can always move these around or make them wider if uh, the selection wasn't correct. You can also add in another um, point if that's something you needed, but yeah, there we go. So we made the boat purple and we made the sky a little richer in a teal color, as you can see there. Uh, one thing to note though, if we were to come back over to here and remember this is a red boat. If we wanted to change this particular hoodie or jacket or whatever it is, you have to remember that this is going to be very similar color to the skin. 
And if we look down here, we can see that we have a lot of yellows and something that's really yellow, which is probably that there, but we have all of this in here, which is probably her skin. So if we were to accidentally move this over and turn this back on, we can see that this uh, purple is starting to go into the skin. So sometimes you might have to scoot them around depending on what's going on. And if you if you need to, you can use the qualifiers to qualify something out, just similar to how we just did the power window. Um, you know, the qualifier is going to pick the particular area in which the rest of the correctors in that uh, correction are going to be able to affect. So you do have that as an option as well. Let's go over to this other shot here. And in this shot, it doesn't look too bad, but it looks like for me, this is pretty milky. So we could just go into our normal corrector. Let's gang the corrector up. And I could scoot this over a little bit to make those blacks a little richer. And let's say, you know, this gold really isn't that uh, uh, wow, I guess I could say. It's not that rich. It's not that saturated. So if we were to boost up the saturation, I'm just going to boost it up significantly because I want to show you a, a way in which that we could uh, fix a problem here. If we were to boost this up, we can see that this black here has a lot of like purple in there, right? And that could be for a lot of different reasons. Uh, a big issue with that is uh, if you don't have your, if you didn't, haven't calibrated your camera to the current uh, temperature uh, for like higher end cameras and stuff. Uh, but sometimes you have this as an issue, right? Where your blacks have some other hue and you know, sometimes you want to make things real rich, but you like, how would we fix this? Uh, and so what we could do is if we come back over to here, we have this luminate, luminance versus saturation. Remember, we're picking something and then adjusting that, right? And so because this is black, obviously the luminance of this is going to be significantly less than everything around, right? Because it's darker. And so what we could do is we could either click up here to pick that area or we could... Um, just you know figure out where it actually is and then from that we could then pull down some of that right because we're reducing the saturation if we were to pull down the whole thing obviously the saturation everywhere is going to get pulled down i'll reset that that to one but so far the shot is looking okay um let's add that saturation in again and we can see that now it's not so significant like it was we could always pull it down a little bit and pull it a little closer over here but obviously we're not going to have that that intense when it comes to the saturation. We might increase it a little bit, but that probably be a little too much. So I just want to show you like a, an easy way to problem solve um, issues like this where uh, you, you sometimes have uh, like a color cast on something uh, and in ways that you can actually use this instead of just always being creative like this one is, we can actually use it to fix a couple of issues that we might have with a shot. But yeah, take a look at all of these. Like I said, the first one is what we're picking and then the second one is the thing that we're going to be adjusting uh, whatever, you know, what this is, right? So hue is always going to be the color saturation, right? Sat is going to be the saturation of a of an of the uh, shot, and then the luminance is going to be the brightness levels of your shot. So understanding how these tools work is obviously going to be the first step into using them. And in a lot of situations that I've come across in the past, these really helped out with uh, not having to either power window something, roto something out, or using a uh, qualifier to pick a particular different area. Um, this kind of does the same thing. But uh, yeah, just play around with it because you can always come up with really creative looks and uh, not having to roto something out and being able to play a video back and get pretty good results is always nice. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I think that kind of concludes my video on using verse curves. Like I said, play around with it. If you wanna know more about DaVinci Resolve, you can take a look at the website. I have a ton of different courses going over everything DaVinci Resolve, as well as pre-made assets you can take a look at. If you want some free titles, I also have those on there as well that you can get as a little freebie. But with that being said, my name's Jared. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one, guys, have a good one. Peace.